with that. Um, all right, so questions that are coming in, feel free to either just type them into the chat or unmute yourselves and ask away. Otherwise we can uh, put your raise hand as one of the reactions and then I'll put you guys in order. Um, but if anyone wants to go ahead and get started, go ahead, Vidya. Hi, Zareen. Um, well, I've been using this. My husband has had this kind of cough for a very long time. Uh, mm -hmm. It started about two, three months ago. And uh, uh, we did a lot of tests. And they said that it's just a dry cough. There's nothing wrong with, you know, there's no infection. Then mm -hmm. eventually, after a series of tests and, you know, a couple of months, they figured out that he had a kind of, um, he had an infection in the chest, which was quite bad. It was a specific kind of infection, which is which was difficult to for them to gauge what it was. But eventually they did. They gave him the right antibiotic and he has no infection now. There is absolutely no infection, no nothing. But the cough persists. So okay. I had spoken to uh, Max Malika and um, I can tell you what we've been doing, uh, but I think we just need to kind of up 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 the treatment. You know, it's it's just taking long, and it's just un it's just a little uncomfortable, yeah. and it's getting better, no doubt about it. But he is not well, you know. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. So um, that's it. So what are you using right now, then? So I'll tell you what I'm using. This is, uh, just a minute, I've got it all written down. Um, yeah, so basically there's a thing called on guard, a mm -hmm. drop in a little bit of water. He kind of inhales it two, three times and then takes it in. Yeah. Then breathe, two drops with a bit of coconut oil massaged on the chest mm -hmm. and lavender on the throat and at the back of the neck here okay. and the back of the neck these are the things that we are doing for the cough and okay. he says he, it 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 uh, he feels um he's more comfortable you know it gives mm -hmm. him a degree of what in hindi aram but yeah. uh, but you know but uh, no not healed as yeah. as such yeah okay uh, so a couple things that you can do is with the on guard, instead of doing water, um, you can either do a little bit of jaggery. Um, so if you have either like warm it up so that it's almost like a syrupy kind of mixture. And then once it's like slightly cooled down a little bit, um, then add in the on guard with that. So I would probably do the on guard drops with jaggery, um, like the the natural gore that we get. But um, is that OK? Is that OK if he's diabetic? The gore should be fine. I would just do like a little, like a little piece of it, okay. uh, very okay. little. But I would say when he's taking it, he can take that um, and then just kind of suck on it with the on guard um, okay. as like a mixture for that. Just very okay. little that he needs to take. But that will help with some of the dryness as well. And then with the breathe, I would also recommend adding lime. So lime essential oil. I would yes, I've got add that. it into, uh, no, not the lemon. It would be lime. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then I, so li okay, lime, lime is a different one. Yeah. So lime is a different one. So I would either, if you have a breathe roller bottle or if you're making a roller bottle with it, add maybe five or six drops of lime. Otherwise, if he's just mixing it in with the coconut oil, add one drop of lime as well with it. And then he can apply that on the chest. So when you say lime, you mean lime essential oil? Yes, correct. Okay. Right. So breathe with lime on the chest. Okay. Yes. And okay. then you can continue the lavender um, and everything else. And then let's see how that goes in the next week. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank no you problem. so much. No. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Sorry, can I say something? Yeah. What about flute that Peter was referring to? So since he doesn't have an infection, I would say the flute may be, it's a dry cough, whereas like the oregano would usually be for like a mucusy cough almost. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it is something that could be tried. But I would say since there isn't any infection anymore, it's just more of just a dry, irritating cough, then it may not be as beneficial um, for him to take that because it might be a little bit strong and warming for him. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you.
Uh, any other questions? Max, do you have any observations that you want to put in? Well, I do want to say that um, the weather is really interesting in India right now. And people are dealing with all kinds of things like chikungunya, dengue, malaria. There's a lot of cases of multiple different viruses going around. There's a stomach bug going around quite a bit. So I was actually hoping that people who had these issues would be joining the call to understand how to do that. But maybe in the recording, we could tell them what they could do for the tummy flu and the tummy mm -hmm. viral, the, um, what they can do for dengue, possibly what to do for chikungunya. And uh, because there's body ache in chikungunya yeah. and in dengue as well, platelet counts go down. So for things like that, what we can do with the EOs, because I've been telling people, don't just use the EOs. You do need to up your intake of your minerals and your vitamins as well. Mm -hmm. But um, which ones to use for for these kinds of uh, naughty mosquito attacks? <laughs> if there's something that we can follow, some sort of protocol, so we can share that with people, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I guess first thing I would highly recommend just making sure you have TerraShield um, to kind of keep the mosquitoes at bay. So TerraShield or citronella or cedarwood. Um, those are, Terra Shield is a blend which has like all of those oils in it. So I would say ideally having Terra Shield to prevent initially, because that's what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're keeping the mosquitoes at bay. So either making up a spray bottle where you can spray it, um, and just spray it onto your curtains before, um, before dusk and before dawn to kind of make sure that the mosquitoes aren't coming in if the windows are open as well as um, either diffusing it in the home or in the bedrooms to make sure that, again, mosquitoes aren't coming in. And if we're going out, um, then even just like a drop near the ankles and maybe one drop near like the wrists or behind the ears or at the back of the neck or something is amazing because with Terra Shield, I find it is very potent. You only need to be using like a drop to be getting that aroma and stuff. And I find that that keeps like mosquitoes at bay definitely so i would say prevention is always better than cure for the first thing so making sure that um, you're doing as much as you can to prevent uh, mosquitoes coming in then secondly when we're talking about um, what we can do to support our bodies i would probably say like the flute um, having that as um, one of the options that would probably be a good one um, to make sure that we're using that to support our bodies. And then secondly, I would say just either on guard, having that on a regular basis, either applying it up and down the spine, um, having someone apply it up and down the spine or bottoms of the feet. Um, if you feel that you've been bitten by a mosquito or something, because there is so much going around, I would say prevention again, using on guard on a regular basis, especially with the weather, everything that's going on on guard is one of the best ones um, to be using to support you. If you're looking for um, more of the digestive support, so if it is like more of like a stomach bug, again, On Guard would be a great one to take. Um, oregano, the flute, um, as well as what I would recommend is Digestin. Um, so if Digestin isn't ideal for you, if that blend doesn't suit you, then another alternative would be fennel um, to be using or just even peppermint by itself. Um, so I would probably recommend... Those ones, then if we're looking at um, to kind of support with like the body aches and um, kind of allowing the body to just kind of rest and restore itself, then the deep blue rub, aroma touch, um, as well as copaiba would probably be the best ones. Um, turmeric would also be a great one to be adding in when we're talking about inflammation in the body, um, because a lot of it is when we're talking about like chikungunya and some of these other ailments we're talking about a lot of inflammation that's coming in very quickly into the body so we want to try to kind of nip it in the butt as quickly as possible um so those are probably the main ones that i would recommend and those ones i would say not all of them come into like the family essentials kit which is like the top 10 oils so those ones are additional add-ons that i would probably recommend um having on a regular basis is like Having turmeric, having lemongrass, having terra shield, copaiba, 
those are probably ones that should be additional staples um, in the home alongside like the regular top 10 oils. I know we had a couple of new people hop on. Um, feel free, either put your questions in the chat box if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask away. I'm going to ask about Siberian fur as well, because I'm finding it's just fantastic, this essential oil. It seems to be able to fix so many things. Yes. But I don't know what yep. to blend it with, but I'll ask that later. Yeah, so Siberian fur, um, I like just using it on its own. Otherwise, with citruses, um, if you like citruses, I would say you can dilute it with citruses. Um, so like either like a tangerine or a wild orange um, and Siberian fur. So any of these ones that we talk about, like that are coniferous um, trees. So basically trees that have like needles on them that typically don't shed during the seasons. So this is where we're talking about like pine trees. Uh, so like pine, birch, um, Siberian fir. That's kind of where these ones are very good for bones and um, for overall like inflammation as well too. And that's where it has like a very good emotional side to it as well. Um, so if you're okay with using it out as is, I would say do that as is. Otherwise, even diluting it with frankincense. Frankincense is a great one um, where it's that musky aroma along with like the earthy aroma is a beautiful blend. So kind of um, depending on that. And then I would say also go back to the um, go back to the essential oil life uh, book as well as the healing the emotions book. Both of them will give like if you look up Siberian fur, it'll give like companion oils uh, that work really nicely with that as well, too. Um, essential oils Thank for you. Yeah, no problem. Um, essential oils for hypothyroidism. So again, it depends on if the person is on medication or not. Um, there's a couple different ones that I would look at. So what I would probably recommend is making like a 10 ml roller bottle. If you are not familiar with making a roller bottle yourself, I would say reach back out to the person that enrolled you to basically help with um, creating a roller bottle for you. And what I would probably recommend is initially with that, um, with hypothyroidism, with like the excess of the thyroid um, being produced, you would want to find like a balancing oil. So when you're blending in your essential oils, one of the main ones that I would probably introduce on a regular basis is going to be DDR prime, um, where the DDR stands for damage DNA repair. So that will assist with the whole body kind of where finding that body's homeostasis. Um, so I would recommend them using that probably on a regular basis. Then if they're making a roller bottle, so if they're doing like, um, like a 10 ml roller bottle, these ones are super easy. I would say doing a blend of like 10 drops of rosemary, myrrh, ginger, juniper berry, or frankincense. So, and clove is like another great one for balancing as well too. So kind of depending on what the personal person's preference is, I would say talk to them and ask them maybe, is there something emotional that happened um, in the past your past like time that triggered or what happened to kind of um, offset their thyroid gland. Um, I would also look at the throat chakras as well too, to kind of see if, are they having trouble like vocalizing things? Are they having trouble um, going more in depth with some of their emotions when it comes to speaking their truth or speaking about um, their feelings? So I would look at the emotional side of it as well too, and then kind of picking and choosing maybe three to five of the essential oils that I might have listed and creating a blend for them for their hypothyroidism. If they're on medication for it, don't ask them to go off the medication. Ask them to get their blood work done with their doctor. Set a baseline. Have them start using a roller bottle. Then within about a month or so or whenever they go for their next blood work, have them do another blood work. If the blood work is reducing um, and coming back or it's like lowering too much, then I would say work, ask them to work with their doctor to slowly either start reducing or halving their dosages um, or completely uh, omitting their thyroid pills that they might be taking and continuing with the essential oils. So I would say ask them to work in conjunction with the doctor to be able to have them support. If it's someone that's just been early diagnosed with hyper, hypo or hyperthyroidism, I would say 
have them start using the EOs immediately and see if they can offset waiting like a month or so before they are put on medication. So that way they can try to avoid that as much as possible. Jareen, thank you very much. It is for hypothyroidism where less of a th thyroid hormone is working. Mm -hmm. So okay. in that case, what it would be? So it would be, you would basically be using the same essential oils for the balancing for them. So because okay. you've written, yeah, for hypo, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, sorry, can you repeat all five of them? Rosemary, juniper, clove, and? Clove, myrrh, and... Mar you can use frankincense as well. And then DDR prime should be one that they should be using regardless. Okay. So DDR prime separately and roll on should be with the remaining five. Yes. Once a day or how? It should I be? would say to use it two to three times a day to be just rolling it across a thyroid gland. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> Uh, EO for tinnitus. So basically tinnitus is uh, ringing of the ear um, where sometimes that happens either after an ear infection or sometimes it's just old age or it just automatically occurs or it might be a side effect from vertigo sometimes. So what I would probably recommend is um, like around the ear canal, um, have them kind of just do a massage where you're using all of the nerves and then also take a look at um if you even just google like the reflexology look at some of the nerve points and stuff what i would recommend ideally is going to be helichrysum um, helichrysum is a great one when it comes to nerve repair um and support for the ear and stuff and that shouldn't be placed inside the ear if they're going to do that you can add a drop onto a cotton ball and then place that inside, uh, just kind of gently pressed inside. Otherwise, I would do massaging like around where like the earlobe is and kind of going around as well as behind the ears. And that's something that they can be doing twice a day um, to be supporting the ear. And that's where it should be definitely helping them over a period of time. And then another great one is also balance. Um, so I don't, I don't think balance comes in a roll on yet for India. Um, but I would say either making them a roll on of balance um, where they can continuously just have that like rubbed in. And what I would do is if they're using balance, open up the roll on or when you're creating this roll on for them, add the helichrysum into it um, where helichrysum should be the majority of the oil. So I would do maybe like 20 drops of helichrysum and then 10 drops of balance top the rest up with fractionated coconut oil and then have them. So basically what they would do is like from the front side, they would roll it on here and then they would roll on directly behind the ear. So where like the ear crease is as much like as close as possible. So that way it's kind of getting absorbed in, um, in that way. Um, okay. Any other questions we have? Yeah, we have more people kind of coming on. I have a question. Uh, I wanted to know for Zendocrine roll-on, what yeah. is the ratio to use for one uh, for two things? One is for a uh, creatinine kidney issue, and the second is for your uh, this thing addictions. So I would say if you're going to be doing it for the creatinine, then I would say see if you can also add in Zendocrine already has juniper berry in it, but I would say, see if you can add in an additional 10 drops of juniper berry. So I would probably do um, 20 drops of Zendocrine, 10 drops of juniper berry, and then top the rest of the 10 ml with fractionated coconut oil and have them apply that two to three times across uh, the liver kidneys area um, across uh, the belly kind of thing where if juniper berry is not available, then I would do 30 drops of Zendocrine. Then, so this is on the front or the back? I would do both front and back of the body. Okay. Yeah. So and basically they're just taking the roller bottle and I would just do like two swipes front and back. And then again, two swipes front and back on the back side. Okay. And what about for, uh, this is for addictions for, or for high creatinine or kidney? That issues? one is for high creatinine and kidney issues. Then for okay. um, addictions, I would probably do just 20 drops of it, of Xenocrine. And then um, another one for addictions that's very good is like either clove or black pepper. Um, helichrysum is another one, but helichrysum is a more expensive oil. Uh, depending on what the addictions are, if it's like alcohol or cigarette, uh, like nicotine addictions, that's kind of where 
Helichrysum would be a great one to add in. So if you're adding any of those, you could do Xenocrine as like 15 drops or 20 drops and then do five drops of like one of the other ones. Um, but black pepper is like another great one to be adding in for addictions. And for addictions- I have clove with me right now and Xenocrine. So should I make the roller with five drops clove and 15 drops Xenocrine? Yeah, that would be perfect. And what I would do is clove is a little bit of a warming oil. So I would have them maybe apply it behind their ears so that they can smell it um, or apply it onto their wrist points um, or even like into the elbow. So that way it kind of goes into um, their pulse points as quickly as possible or even behind the knees. I'm not sure if you guys can hear the background noise, but... <laughs> Zareen can't hear you. You've muted yourself. Um, okay. Uh, the next one was EO allergy for high IgE levels. Um, so what I would probably do is I would avoid on guard um, for it, where if someone is having... Um, Generally, when it comes to any of these essential oils, you should not be having allergic reactions to any of them unless you're allergic to like the plant itself. Um, and that's where it wouldn't be an allergic reaction, be more of like a sensitivity that you're having where because of these, the way the essential oils are extracted, the proteins are extracted out of them. So usually it's the proteins are what causes an allergic reaction into the body. So that's where with any of the essential oils, there shouldn't be any allergic reaction. If someone does have high IgE levels, I would go back to the basics, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Um, those are some of the best essential oils when it comes to allergies, um, especially either seasonal allergies or any type of allergies, because when we look at lavender essential oil, um, it is like an antihistamine. Um, so when we look at, when we use, like when we might be prescribing Claritin or something else, um, for allergies, that's where you can use your lavender, lavender, peppermint, equal proportions of it and dilute it accordingly. So again, if someone does have a high IgE level, I would say ask them to dilute something, um, more. So use maybe just one drop of each lemon, lavender, and peppermint and dilute it with maybe one tablespoon, um, of coconut oil or a carrier oil that is suitable for their skin type and then see how the sensitivity is. If they're okay with it um, and it's supporting them with their allergies, they can always see if they do need to decrease the dilution ratio um, to make it a little bit more concentrated to support them more. Otherwise, instead of increasing the concentration, they can then just apply more often. So instead of doing it two or three times a day, they could maybe do it five times a day. And when you create a roller bottle, just doing about 10 drops of the uh, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. So you could do three drops lemon, three drops lavender, three drops peppermint, fill the rest up with fractionated coconut oil. And that way it's ready for them to just kind of roll across their chest. They could roll it across their sinuses, making sure that they're avoiding inside their nose and their eyes. They could apply it behind their ears. So that way they're also breathing it in on a regular basis. Um, and again, with that, I would say using uh, the pulse points um, kind of where the warmth is the highest in the body to kind of absorb in. Um, marjoram, the right one for headaches. So it really depends. So if you've been guided to marjoram, it's probably because there might've been some emotional relation uh, to using marjoram for headaches. Marjoram's a great essential oil. Um, I use it for like muscle aches and stuff as well too, or muscle recovery. With headaches, it kind of depends. Everyone is triggered by different um, onsets for headaches. Sometimes it could be dehydration. It could be the sun. It could be emotional onset. It could be fasting. It could be food related. There's so many different things. So again, if you've kind of been guided towards marjoram, I would say start with marjoram. Otherwise alternatives for headaches are peppermint, lavender, deep blue, frankincense, copaiba. There are so many different ones. 
um, when it comes to headaches and migraines and stuff that when we're looking at like head tension, um, there's a lot of emotional side that goes along with it as well too. So it would probably be a little bit of a deeper dive to look at that. Um, dehydration. Um, so dehydration, uh, if we're just looking at oils to use for dehydration, I would say um, just having an essential oil added into your water. So a wild orange or a citrus or a mint oil added into the water to make sure that someone is just hydrating themselves and having a little bit more water. Otherwise, um, outside of India, doTERRA has electrolytes, um, which are amazing, which are added it into the water where it's just a beautiful blend that you just kind of add into your water and then have that um and that's kind of a balance of minerals and salts um that get added in the yeah so i think that covers all those questions we have just two more minutes left so if there's any other questions feel free to either unmute yourselves or ask away problem Yeah, Max. So if no one's got another question, I have one. I have yarrow bomb, which is sort of drying up. What can I do to sort of preserve it? Do I just mix it with FCO so it stays in liquid form and then I can use it on like a yeah. body lotion or a body oil or something? Yep, I would say either mix it with FCO um, and the FCO, you can also take internally as well, too. Um, so your palm is like a great one to be just adding a couple drops on the tongue. Um, otherwise, I would say mix the your palm with like the unscented uh, body lotion and then make it into like a cream base or um, mix it with FCO. And you can either just pour the FCO directly into the yarrow palm bottle and then just kind of like give it a good shake um, to kind of let it pick up everything that's inside of it or you can pour the yarrow palm out into like another um, glass jar or something that you can squirt some of the lotion into it and then make it more into like a cream-based um, lotion. Okay, and, and that'll sort of preserve it and prevent it from uh, crystallizing and solidifying? Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. it should, so solidifying, so it shouldn't be like it, I find, yeah, it does like dry up and like kind of flake up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I would say probably, Putting it in with like a carrier oil would probably be like the best one, depending on, and then that way you can always mix that with a lotion or something as well too afterwards. Thank you. No problem. Okay, guys. Jaren, yeah, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, Jaren, you said for high IG levels, uh, it is lemon, lavender, peppermint topically. Is there uh, like to take internally anything? Uh, what would you recommend? Sorry, it cut out, I think. Yeah, like for high I IG levels, you said mm -hmm. lemon, peppermint, lavender, topically. Yeah. Uh, anything you would suggest for internal, for intake? Internally? So the internal, the same thing can be taken yeah. internally. Um, and that can be put into like a veggie capsule. So lavender is not a, even though it smells sweet, it is a very bitter oil. So depending yeah. on how the person uh, wants to take it, you can either put one drop each, um, on the tongue or in like a capsule. I would probably say like in a capsule would be ideal. So doTERRA has um, Tri-Ease capsules, which is lemon, yes. lavender, peppermint um, that they do sell from the US warehouse. Um, okay. And that is like a blended already put into a capsule. Otherwise, if you have veggie capsules, one drop of each uh, can be done internally. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, all right, we're gonna Go ahead and close this out. So we have another um, session, say exactly the same Q&A like this. So I would recommend um, for anyone that did find benefit from this class or has someone that um, would be able to benefit from um, attending one of these Q&As, invite them to the class tomorrow. It'll basically be, I think we're going to do it, it's a little bit earlier. So tomorrow's class will be at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The same link that you use to get on today will apply. Um, so definitely 
do try and invite anyone else that you think could be benefiting from asking their questions or if they have questions and they're not confident enough to come on and uh, talk about them, ask them to share them with you so that way you can provide answers uh, back for them. Um, but we're looking forward to doing more Q&A sessions as well too. So I hope um, you guys found benefit in today's class. And then if anyone is looking to do like a private consultation where they're wanting to dive deeper into specific ailments, um, you can go to my Teachable website um, or you can just message me or anyone that's invited you to the class and then I can provide you with a link uh, for a private consultation for that. So thank you all for joining and we'll see you guys tomorrow if you want to come on. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you.